Coming up tonight on YCN News, there is a meeting held to discuss the future of the Unity School Building. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin has a way to make Vermont more green. And we'll learn about the Claremont Charter Commission. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN and your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of YCN News. I'm Matt McDonald. Like a doctor who has to deliver bad news to a patient, school superintendent Middleton McGoodwin wasted no time in sharing a dismal prognosis. It's important that you be aware of your decision and what the consequence is. Unity is between a rock and a very hard place, McGoodwin told dozens of residents packed into the town hall Tuesday night. Town meeting voters are being asked to approve a special warrant article that will cost Unity taxpayers an unexpected $2.75 million to complete the K-8 through grade school. This amount is on top of a $3.6 million proposed 2014-15 school budget. Property taxes will go up at least $1 per $1,000 valuation if the special article is approved. McGoodwin continued, delivering the worst part of residents' predicament. If the $2.75 million bond is not approved, taxes will still go up and at a higher rate. More money will be needed to bus Unity students to nearby town schools. Along with extra transportation costs, residents would need to pay the tuition costs charged by other school districts. Unity teachers and staff would lose their jobs, plus unemployment costs would rise. Even if residents choose not to finish building the school, the building can't stay up as a statue in the field. It would have to come down, McGoodwin said. School district attorney Matt Upton told the audience that the project would be reviewed after construction is complete to see if any fraud or subcontractor errors had occurred. We're going to leave no stone unturned, Upton said. Despite this, residents were given some positive news, too. Trumbull Nelson's Ron Bauer says the 38,000 square foot building's roof is sound and its interior very well insulated from the weather. You know, it's very common to use steel. It's, it's non-combustible, and mm -hmm. that's a requirement in most schools, bigger schools, to go with non-combustible construction. And uh, that was one of the fire marshal's concerns with the windows, that uh, you can't use wood framing around the windows uh, because, you know, because it's combustible. Mm -hmm. So you try to keep the building non-combustible and, uh, you know, steel, steel works. You know, that's one of the easier ways to do it. And key to moving forward as spring approaches, officials with the New Hampshire State Fire Marshal's office lifted the stop work order so that what now appears as a vast red steel structure will become the town's newest and largest public building. What began as a $4.7 million school with another voter approved $750,000 at the 2013 school district meeting continues to get more expensive. Even so, per square foot, the new school will cost about $225 on average, with the $200 to $300 per square foot throughout the state. State Fire Investigator and Section Chief Ron Anstey explained, work can begin again on the building, weather permitting. State officials slapped the stop work order on the school project last summer. Windows for the building needed to be safely tested. Despite assurances from Upton, Bauer, Owners Rep Ron Bristol, and State Representatives Skip Rollins and Linda Tanner, many residents remain skeptical, such as Ellen Donatelli. A painter spoke well of Ron Bauer's Trumbull Nelson firm, yet asked if the building could be sold as is. What if this is done and the money used to pay off the bonds, asked Donatelli. More bad news came residents' way. Because state education leaders contributed about 45% of the originally proposed $4.7 million school, the state needs to be repaid. In other Sullivan County news, members of the newly elected Claremont Charter Commission got to work Tuesday night. The nine-member board heard city residents' concerns over how the city should be governed, the Eagle Times reports. Walter White, Jr., who ran for the commission but was not elected by voters, told commissioners the city doesn't need a manager Current city manager Guy Santigate has steered Claremont since 2001. Commission member Cynthia Howard, who proposed the idea of the Charter Commission, says Claremont is not large enough to be a city. Claremont's current population is about 13,000 per the 2010 National Census. Fellow Commissioner Rusty Fowler says it's better for the city to return to its town status. Residents and registered voters would have more input on how the city spends its money, he says. 
Yet current city councilor and commission member Nick Koloski says drastic changes as proposed Tuesday night do not have to be made. This isn't a witch hunt against the city council, says Koloski. Commission Chairman George Cacavero reminded the audience and board that it is not how Claremont is governed, but rather who governs it. Meanwhile, whatever the commission believes should be changed, voters in November will need to approve. Without this green light, proposals will remain just that. Stay tuned for more news after the break. The YCN News continues in a moment. The good folks at H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating Oils want you to know that their philosophy is simple. Wow them with our service. Their experts provide complete heating systems, air conditioning, and hot water heater installations at a fair price. They're specialists in radiant in-floor and hydro air systems. Building a new home or just replacing an old system, call for an estimate. Wow them with service. It's the H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating Oils way of doing business. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Matt McDonald. Across the Connecticut River, the state of Vermont continues to go green in several ways. Today, Governor Peter Shumlin, State Treasurer Beth Pierce, and local legislators outlined a plan to create a new revolving loan fund to reduce energy costs in state buildings. The goal is to reduce utility costs with efficient energy use across Vermont. The state now spends about $14 million to heat, light, and cool its buildings a press release from Shumlin's office notes. Shumlin says this is the right thing to do for taxpayers, and it shows the state is leading by example. The loan fund will allow the treasurer's office to invest up to $8 million to make state buildings more energy efficient. Interest from the loans will be reinvested and allow for more loans to be given. Today's announcement follows a request by the state legislature at the end of this 2013 season. Members of the House and Senate Institutions Committees asked for a way to trim state building utility costs with a limited amount of money. Some buildings at the state office complex in Waterbury are using less energy. As New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan waits to see if the state Senate will approve expanding Medicaid throughout the state, the Federal Department of Health and Human Services reports more people are signing up for medical insurance. Under the nation's new insurance plan, known also as the Affordable Care Act, about 4 million people have signed up for insurance since October 1st, 2013. March 31st is the deadline to apply for insurance that will take effect this year. Please tune in tomorrow when YCN News will bring you news from a forum being held tomorrow morning at the Common Man Restaurant in Claremont. The meeting is open to the public. It will be held from 10 a.m. to noon. Candidate for Executive Counselor Joe Kenny will lead a discussion of all things healthcare related. The YCN News continues in a moment. We want people around us who care. People who take the time to understand what we need. The staff at the VNA of Vermont and New Hampshire provide the best medical care and much more. Sometimes what matters most is a sign that someone is listening, a friendly smile, or a gentle touch. The visiting nurse and hospice of Vermont and New Hampshire. People heal better at home. Let us help. Coda & Coda has been providing trust, confidence, and peace of mind since 1941. And we just opened an office in Winhall, Vermont to better serve our customers. For over 70 years, Coda & Coda has served people of New Hampshire and Vermont with clean, reliable heating fuels. From bio-blended heating oil, propane gas, kerosene, diesel fuel, and gasoline, we're providing quality of our products and our unmatched superior service. At Coda & Coda, you can depend on us. We're staking our name on it. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Matt McDonald. Now let's look at the weather for the next five days. Tomorrow we will have a continuation of snow showers. Highs will be in the mid-20s and a low down to negative one. Friday will return to partly cloudy skies with a high of 20 and a low of three degrees. 
Saturday will again be partly cloudy with temperatures making an increase. Highs will be in the lower 30s and lows down to 20 degrees. Sunday and Monday we will see more snow. Sunday temperatures will be in the upper 20s and lows down to 10 degrees. Monday temperatures will be in the mid 20s and a low down to 8 degrees. And now let's look at the northeastern and national radar maps. Now let's look at our community calendar. There are some important town meetings coming up. In Walpole, there is a select board meeting starting at 6 p.m. In Canaan, there is a planning board meeting at 7 p.m. And in Norwich, there is a planning commission meeting at 7 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. And now let's take a look at local high school basketball games that occurred last night. In New Hampshire boys basketball, Hanover triumphed over John Stark 58-45. There was a great game last night with Lebanon versing Bishop Brady. Lebanon won the game 74-56. This game was the final one for Lebanon's regular season. They are 16 wins and 14 losses overall. Lebanon will go on to host the first playoff game this season. YCN News will feature highlights from this game tomorrow. In Vermont boys basketball, Woodstock and Lemoyle battled it out. Woodstock High School was the victor in this very close game. Woodstock will go on to host Mount St. Joseph Academy from Rutland during the quarterfinals game this weekend. Be sure to check out this exciting and highly anticipated game. As you know, the Olympics are over and it's time to have one last look at the final results of all the hard work athletes all over the world work for. In first place is Russia with 13 golds and 33 total medals. In second place is Norway with 11 golds and 26 total medals. In third place is Canada with 10 gold and 25 total medals. And in fourth place is the United States. They have 9 golds and 28 total medals. 